I'm not wedded to that whole deal now. Uh, well, I knew it when I was 32 and Led Zeppelin finished, and I was just standing there going, wow. Robert Plant is one of the most legendary and influential rock singers of all time. As the lead vocalist of Led Zeppelin, he mesmerized millions of fans with his powerful voice, charismatic stage presence, and poetic lyrics. But behind his success was a journey full of tragedy, hidden for half a century. In this video, we will reveal Robert's deepest secrets and the whole story behind the hardships that haunted Robert's life. Let's dive in. Robert's Happy Beginning Robert Anthony Plant came into the world on 20th of August, 1948, in the industrial town of West Bromwich, Staffordshire, England. His parents were Robert C. Plant, a civil engineer who served in the Royal Air Force during World War II, and Annie Celia Plant, a woman of Romani heritage. His childhood was nothing short of delightful, and we have his mother, Annie Celia Plant, to thank for that. She was a Romani woman known for her suitably and joyfully combustible nature. As described by Plant himself in an interview with BBC's Desert Island Discs. From a young age, Robert Plant was fascinated by singing and rock and roll music. He dreamed of becoming like Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. In a 1994 interview with Andrew Denton on The Denton Talk Show, Plant recalled how he used to pretend to be Elvis as a 10-year-old. When I was a kid, I used to hide behind the curtains at home at Christmas, and I used to try and be Elvis. There was a certain magic between the curtains and the French windows. There was a certain music there for a 10-year-old. That was all the music I got at 10 years old. And I always wanted to be a bit similar to that. But achieving this dream was not easy. He faced a challenge right from the start. Robert Plant's battle against numbers and notes. Robert Plant also faced the age-old struggle between passion and practicality early on in his life. His love for music clashed with his father's desire for a more traditional career path. But how did it all begin? Let's rewind the clock and delve into the origins of this conflict. It all started when Robert was just a young lad of nine, belting out Elvis Presley tunes into his hairbrush. His passion for music was evident from an early age, and even his father recognized his talent, taking him to the town's blues club, Seven Stars. Little did his father know that this would be the breeding ground for Plant's musical aspirations, as he cut his teeth with the house band, the Delta Blues Band. In an interview with the BBC's Two Desert Island Discs, Plant shed light on the generational gap that fueled the conflict. His father, like many of his era, couldn't comprehend the idea of making a living through music. To them, a real job meant something more conventional, like accountancy. And so the stage was set for a showdown between father and son, with numbers on one side and notes on the other. But what do you think? Do you believe Robert's father did the right thing by pushing him towards a more conventional career path? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Despite his father's reservations, Plant found himself enrolled in an undergraduate program in finance and accounting at the London School of Economics. It seemed like he was on the path to fulfilling his father's wishes, but fate had other plans. After just two weeks, Plant abandoned his accounting studies to pursue his true passion music. But although he dropped out, he did retain some skills that helped Led Zeppelin save Tremengaus amounts of money on their tours. For example, he once suggested renting a jet and sleeping on it rather than paying for hundreds of hotel rooms. But just before this, he went through a big deal of emotional instability while trying to fight for what he loves and even paid a big price. After all, sometimes it takes a rebel with a cause to change the world. Robert Plant's Quest for Independence Robert Plant had no idea that his audacious choice to leave school at the age of 17 would lead to his being one of the most recognizable voices in rock history. His quest for independence led him to immerse himself in the English Midlands blues scene, where he honed his musical skills and discovered the rich variety of blues and other genres that would shape his future. I left home at 17, 
plant recalled. And I started my real education musically, moving from group to group, furthering my knowledge of the blues and of other music, which had weight and was worth listening to. This decision to pursue his passion for music over conventional education set the stage for a remarkable journey filled with twists and turns. Plant's early influences included legendary blues artists such as Johnson, Buka White, Skip James, Jerry Miller, and Sleepy John Estes. As he delved deeper into the world of music, he took on various jobs to make ends meet including working for the major British construction company Wimpe in Birmingham, and even doing a stint at Woolworths in Hale-Sawin Town. It was during this time that he cut three obscure singles on CBS Records and sang with a variety of bands, each experience adding layers to his evolving musical identity. One pivotal moment in Plant's journey was his association with the Crawling King Snakes, a band that brought him into contact with drummer John Bonham. Their collaboration would eventually lead to the formation of the Band of Joy, where they seamlessly merged blues with newer psychedelic trends, setting the stage for their future success. However, Plant's pursuit of his musical dreams came at a cost. His decision to join the Crawling King Snakes deeply upset his parents, leading to a period of strained relations. Reflecting on this turbulent time, Plant remarked, Well, I was bound for a proper job, and I've got one. It was a poignant reminder of the sacrifices he had to make in order to follow his passion. Despite the challenges and initial disapproval from his parents, Plant's resilience and talent ultimately paid off. He managed to carve out a successful career in music, defying the conventional path that society expected him to follow. Looking back on those formative years, Plant mused, I had my moment of professional potential, and because I didn't accept it, I had to leave home when I was 17, so I toughened up pretty quickly. I made my peace with my parents a couple of years later, but it was good. It was what it should be. Robert Plant's Sonic Breakthrough Back in 1963, a 15-year-old Robert Plant found himself on the cusp of a sonic breakthrough. His friends and schoolmates were part of a band called The Jurymen, and little did he know, his life was about to change forever. According to Jurymen guitarist Gary Tolley, Plant initially started out as a roadie, lugging around their gear and soaking in the music without actually taking center stage. However, Fate had other plans in store for him. When the band's singer fell ill, Plant was thrust into the spotlight at the Bull's Head Pub in Lye. With trepidation in his heart, he took to the stage and belted out a performance that would set the course for his future. Now, the details of that fateful gig are shrouded in conflicting accounts. Plant himself recalls feeling nervous and avoiding eye contact with the audience, at least until 1968. On the other hand, Jurymen drummer John Dudley paints a picture of a confident and charismatic Plant, commanding the stage with ease. Whatever the truth may be, one thing is clear. Plant's powerful voice left an indelible mark on the crowd that night. As the years rolled on, Plant found himself crossing paths with two seasoned musicians, Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones. The trio would go on to form one of the most iconic rock bands in history. But the journey to that point was rife with twists and turns. In the late 1960s, Page and Jones were already established figures in the music scene. Jones had lent his talents to the likes of Donovan and Jeff Beck, while also crafting the iconic string arrangement for the Rolling Stones' She's a Rainbow. Meanwhile, Page was on the hunt for the perfect vocalist to complement their musical vision. His first choice, Terry Reed, was unable to commit due to prior engagements, leading him to recommend Plant as a suitable replacement. Little did they know, this recommendation would set the stage for a legendary partnership. Joining forces with Page and Jones was a daunting prospect for the young Plant. He found himself in the company of musicians who exuded confidence and maturity, 
which initially left him feeling intimidated. It wasn't until around 1970, 1971 that Plant truly came into his own as a performer. While all these was going on, Robert found love. He found solace in the arms of Maureen Wilson. Their love story began in 1966 at a canceled Georgie Fame concert, where Wilson became his unwavering support system. While Plant chased his musical dreams, Wilson held down the fort with her hard work and dedication. From unknown to uncredited. Back in 1968, a young Robert Plant was just another face in the crowd of aspiring musicians. With a record contract in hand and a few songs under his belt, he was far from being a household name. Surprisingly, despite his undeniable talent and confidence as an artist, his name was nowhere to be found in the song credits of Led Zeppelin's first album. It's a mystery that even Sherlock Holmes would struggle to solve. You see, Plant was tied up in a pesky contract with CBS Records, which prevented him from receiving any credit for the songs on the album. This legal entanglement left him unrecognized for his contributions to one of the most iconic rock albums of all time. It's like winning the lottery, but being unable to claim your prize. Talk about a tragic twist of fate. But just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, something terrible happened. A terrifying crash. Back in 1970, Robert Plant was living the dream. He was the frontman of the wildly successful band Led Zeppelin, happily married to Maureen Wilson and enjoying life on a farm in rural England with their baby daughter, Carmen, and a menagerie of pets. But little did he know, he was about to face not one, but two near-fatal automobile accidents that would change his life forever. The first brush with death came during a copyright infringement trial over the iconic song, Stairway to Heaven. Plant found himself in a courtroom, being questioned about attending a spirit concert and playing snooker with one of the band members. His response? I don't remember any of it. Why, you ask? Well, it turns out he had just been in a horrific car crash. According to Plant, his wife suffered a fractured skull, and he had a piece of the windshield embedded in his head. As if that wasn't enough, fate had another cruel twist in store for Plant. In 1975, while vacationing on the Greek island of Rhodes with his family and Jimmy Page's daughter, they were involved in yet another car crash. This time, Plant shattered his right leg and elbow, while Maureen sustained even more serious injuries, including a broken skull and fractured pelvis. It was a miracle that they all survived with the exception of little Scarlet Page, who miraculously escaped unscathed. But being the resilient rock star that he is, Plant didn't let these tragedies hold him back. Despite being confined to a wheelchair for months, he managed to record the 1976 album Presence with the epic track Achilles' Last Stand initially dubbed The Wheelchair Song. Now that's what we call turning adversity into art. It's safe to say that Robert Plant has truly lived through some harrowing experiences, but like a true rock legend, he's emerged stronger than ever. But the bad days were far from over. The unforgettable symphony of hardship. Back in 1977, the legendary band Led Zeppelin found themselves in a bit of a pickle. After a tumultuous few years, including a semi-hiatus due to lead singer Robert Plant's unfortunate car accident, they were eager to reclaim their status as the reigning rock gods. However, the music landscape had shifted with the rise of punk rock, and their 1976 album, Presence, didn't quite hit the mark. Determined to show the world they still had it, the band set off on a world tour. But as luck would have it, things went awry right from the start. Plant lost his voice, causing tour dates to be pushed back. Finally hitting the road in April, they were ready to conquer the stage once again. Then came that fateful day, July 26, 1977. Plant received not one, but two gut-wrenching phone calls. The first delivered the heartbreaking news that his son, Karak, was gravely ill. The second call shattered his world. Karak, just five years old, 
had passed away. Just a week earlier, Plant's daughter, Carmen, had been sick, but had thankfully recovered. When Carrick fell ill, it seemed like the same old stomach virus. Little did they know, it would take a devastating turn. Plant immediately left the tour and rushed home. Understandably, the rest of the tour was called off. With all that happened, Plant found himself at a crossroads, and the weight of grief and loss led him to make a life-altering decision. From Mick to Chalkboard. When Robert Plant left the music scene, he didn't just step away. He retreated to the family's farmhouse and embarked on a mission to gather the shattered pieces of his life. In his own words, he tried to put it together while grappling with the loss of his son. Music, once his passion, no longer held the same allure. As he candidly confessed to Charlie Rose in 2012, there were priorities beyond being an entertainer. The rock star lifestyle no longer seemed appealing in the face of personal tragedy. In a revealing interview with Rolling Stone, Plant bared his soul, expressing his deep longing to be with his family. The loss of his son had left a void that even the fame and fortune of Led Zeppelin couldn't fill. It was a tumultuous time, and Plant contemplated a career change, seeking something more meaningful and less self-centered. In a reflective moment with GQ, he acknowledged the inherent insecurity that often plagues entertainers and yearned for a more honest and humble path. His unexpected solution? To apply for a teaching position at the Rudolf Steiner Waldorf Schools in the West Midlands. As Plant recounted in a lively interview on the BBC's Desert Island Discs, fate intervened in the form of John Bonham. But how did it happen? Plant arrives at the Waldorf Education Center only to find Bonham waiting for him at the gate, dressed in a chauffeur's cap and ready to whisk him away in a six-door Mercedes. Bonham's antics were enough to bring a smile to Plant's face as he found himself being chauffeured to a pub, all in, an effort to change his mind about leaving music behind. It was a classic case of friendship and camaraderie, winning over uncertainty. Bonham's unwavering belief in Plant and their shared love for music proved to be the turning point. Inspired by Bonham's infectious enthusiasm, Plant made the decision to stay with Led Zeppelin, at least for the time being. Little did he know that life had more challenges in store that would put his commitment to the test once more. Another Devastating Loss In September 1980, the music industry was struck with yet another sad loss, with the passing of John Bonham, the iconic drummer of Led Zeppelin. Ever since their high school years, Bonham and Robert Plant, both from the black country and aspiring musicians, had been inseparable. But Plant was left reeling by Bonham's untimely death, and it was soon obvious that Led Zeppelin would not exist without him. The circumstances surrounding Bonham's death were as tragic as they were shocking. As the band was gearing up for their first tour since 1977, it was evident that Bonham's battle with alcohol abuse had reached a dangerous peak. Reports revealed that on the day of his passing, he had consumed a staggering 40 units of vodka, painting a grim picture of his state of mind. John Paul Jones, who discovered his bandmate's lifeless body, recounted the harrowing ordeal, stating that despite some fleeting moments of promise during rehearsals, Bonham's descent into alcohol-fueled oblivion was unmistakable. His untimely demise was attributed to a fatal accident, with Jones emphasizing that it could have befallen anyone in a similar state. The news of Bonham's death hit Plant like a ton of bricks, and the realization that Led Zeppelin could never be the same without their beloved drummer weighed heavily on him. Even after Bonham's son, Jason Bonham, stepped in to play with the band for their 2007 Celebration Day concert in London, Plant remained resolute in his decision that without Bonham, there could be no Led Zeppelin revival. When Jason inquired about the band reuniting, Plant's response was poignant and final. I loved your dad way too much. When your father left us, left the world, that was it for Led Zeppelin. Then something unexpected happened. Robert Plant's vocal hurdles. The legendary Robert Plant 
was known for his iconic scream and impressive vocal range that have captivated Led Zeppelin fans for decades. But did you know that Plant's vocal cords have faced some serious hurdles along the way? Rumor has it that Plant underwent vocal cord surgery in the 70s, sparking endless debates on online forums. Some claim it happened, others are skeptical. The mystery deepens when the New York Post casually drops Plant's name in a list of singers who had nodules extracted from their vocal cords in 2012. The exact timing of Plant's alleged vocal cord surgery remains shrouded in mystery, but eagle-eyed fans on Reddit have pointed to a possible window between 1972 and 1974, citing noticeable changes in his voice during that period. It's like a musical whodunit, with fans playing detective to uncover the truth about Plant's vocal escapades. Fast forward to the early 1990s, and Plant faced another nail-biting moment when a voice specialist in London delivered a grim prognosis. In six months' time, your voice won't even be able to show signs of surprise. It's over. The doctor's dire prediction threatened to silence Plant's rock star career, sending shockwaves through the music world. Now, we all know that professional singing is no walk in the park for one's vocal cords. Just ask Elton John and Steven Tyler, who have also weathered their fair share of vocal storms. But Plant wasn't ready to throw in the towel just yet. With steely determination, he defied the odds and made a triumphant comeback, releasing several records post-1990s vocal scare. Talk about a plot twist. So, what's the moral of this saga? Well, it's a reminder that even rock gods like Robert Plant aren't immune to vocal challenges. But with resilience, a dash of luck, and maybe a sprinkle of rock and roll magic, they can conquer those hurdles and keep belting out those timeless tunes. Robert Plant's Divorce Robert Plant, the legendary frontman of Led Zeppelin, has had his fair share of ups and downs in the romance department. From dedicating sweet love songs to his wife to moving in with a folk singer, Plant's love life has been anything but boring. It all started with Maureen Wilson, the woman who captured Plant's heart. He was so smitten with her that he dedicated the song Thank You on Led Zeppelin II to her. Talk about a grand gesture. But as often happens in the world of rock and roll, fame and fortune can put a strain on even the strongest of relationships. After the birth of their first child, Carmen, cracks began to show in their once solid union. Maureen took on the role of stay-at-home mom while Plant continued to tour with the band. He tried to juggle his responsibilities as a father and husband. But let's face it, the allure of the rock star lifestyle was hard to resist. As he candidly admitted, I'd spent so much time trying to be a decent dad, but at the same time, I was really attracted to what I was doing in Zeppelin. Despite their best efforts, the couple ultimately called it quits in 1983. Plant never remarried, but that doesn't mean his love life came to a screeching halt. In the years following his divorce, Plant dipped his toes back into the dating pool, but nothing quite matched the level of commitment he had with Maureen. That is, until he met folk singer-songwriter Patty Griffin. The two hit it off and soon found themselves in a serious relationship. Plant even moved in with Griffin in Austin, Texas, and they collaborated on the band's album, 2010's Band of Joy. It seemed like Plant had found love once again. But alas, all good things must come to an end. In 2014, Plant and Griffin called it quits, and Plant made his way back across the pond to England. The breakup clearly took its toll on the rock star, as evidenced by his heartfelt 2017 album Carry Fire. As he put it, If you listen to the album, you can hear me pouring out my heart to whoever's interested, cause that's what I do. And it's not easy to do that, believe me. And now that Robert is 75, what is he up to? At 75, Robert Plant is still rocking the music world with his powerful vocals and impressive career spanning over 40 years. Known for his trademark high-pitched screams, Plant has influenced a generation of singers including Freddie Mercury, Axl Rose, and Chris Cornell. But did you know that this legendary singer was supposed to be in Game of Thrones? In a candid interview, 
Plant revealed that he once turned down the opportunity to star in the hit fantasy series, jokingly stating, I don't want to be typecast, and admitting that he hadn't even watched the show. Despite his age and immense success, Plant shows no signs of slowing down. When asked about retirement, he quipped, I'll probably retire when I run out of breath. Unlike his peers like Elton John, who are considering retirement to spend more time with family, Plant is determined to keep going as long as he's able. With a net worth of $200 million, Plant is still passionate about touring and performing. He humorously dismisses the idea of retirement, stating, People used to say to me, Well, you must have done enough now. Enough of what? Enough to retire. So imagine the blessing to be 40 years further down the road, and I still don't know enough to stop in any respect. At 75, Robert Plant continues to defy expectations and inspire with his unwavering passion for music. As he puts it, there's always something new to learn, somewhere new to take it. I love it, and we love him for it. Robert Plant has lived a fascinating life and has experienced the highs and lows of fame, success, tragedy, and creativity. He has also left behind a legacy of memorable songs, performances, and stories. So what aspects of Robert Plant's life and music captivate you the most? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section. Thanks for watching. For a more thrilling story, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. Your screen. Your screen. Your screen.